What's going on, everybody? Hey, you guys. Welcome back to East Africa with Willie and Rachel. We're super excited to be sitting with you again. Praise God. Amen. And we are continu continuing to talk about Founded on the Rock. We're talking yes. about Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Rach, go ahead, baby. We are. You know, let's just go ahead and look at Colossians again right here. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1. And let's start in 26. No, 27. To, to them, God willed to make known what are mm -hmm. the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that he may present every man perfect in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. And again, I love this when we go back to talking about the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's awesome. Yep. Christ in you. Mm -hmm. You see, what I feel so many people, they have all these strange ideas about what happens to you once you get born again. But we know for sure that Christ is in you. Yeah. This is why he is the chief cornerstone. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Christ is in you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you make some mistakes. and It does matter in the sense of your life and that you should live yeah, you want to a bear holy fruit, life that brings fruit. But God does not reject you. God does not disdain you mm -hmm. um, or think evil about you if you have struggles. Mm -hmm. He wants you to have victory, which is why he wants you to yep. not have struggles, not yep. struggle with sin. But do you see that Christ lives in you based on what he's done? Not based on what you've done. And it's Christ in you that is the hope of all glory in your life. This is why it's based upon him. It's not based upon you. And that is the difference in these two covenants that we found, that we have here, that we found. <laughs> I didn't find it. It's been here. It's been right here. Yes. But this covenant that Jesus established in his own blood mm -hmm. was based upon him, was based upon his glory, his righteousness, which is why Paul said, him we preach. Amen. Amen. Not I mm -mm. preach myself, not I preach the law, not I preach Brother Willie. Mm -hmm. Him we preach. Yeah. Christ crucified is what they preach. This is our all in all. And when we begin to shift this in line, it bears fruit in every area of our life. Amen. This is why Jesus talked about in John, the vine, abiding in the vine, abiding in his life, yeah. making him, Willie, really, the source mm -hmm. of all mm -hmm. and all in our life. When you're connecting, see, because there's a disconnect in so many people's life, and that disconnect is themselves, or yeah. that disconnect is works of the law mm -hmm. that they think are going to bring them into favor with God, mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it might be. That's the disconnect. See, Jesus said, I am the true vine. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to abide Amen. in me if you want life. Amen. All life, all good works, because there are good works <laughs> yep. that every believer should be doing, mm -hmm. that should be in your life. All of that is going to flow from the source. Yep. We always mention this. It's the root that bears fruit. Yeah. You don't get fruit without a root. You don't get life without the source mm -hmm. of that life. Amen. And Jesus is the source of that life. Studying his life, his death, and his resurrection, and the epistles of what he accomplished, mm -hmm. connecting to that, seeing that, walking that out, making that your foundation in your life mm -hmm. is where all of this flows from because you can't even have a relationship with God without seeing that that's established on Jesus. Yeah. Because the reason why some people disconnect in their relationship with God is one, they're confused about who God is. So to clear that all up, you can see that in Hebrews or John. Mm -hmm. Let me just go over to Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's where you start peering at Jesus to see mm -hmm. God's will for your life, yeah. you are on the right path. Right, yeah, and making him 
the focus of mm -hmm. everything. Very the reason we even stand before God, the yeah. reason why God wants, you know, to have a relationship with us yeah. is because he loves us. Yes, we're his creation, but it's possible through Jesus. This is why Rachel and I talk so much about free will. Yeah. And we talk about giving your life to the Lord in the sense of like, Lord, you are my all in all, my everything. Mm -hmm. Is because we totally yeah. have confidence in that God and the Holy Spirit can do their job. Right? I mean, they, the Lord can do his own job. He doesn't need us to be God in people's lives. So we're not here to proclaim us. Yeah. We're not here to preach us. And yeah. we're not here, we give our testimony about what God's done. We give examples mm -hmm. of when it, you know, to show like how it worked, how these scriptures worked in our life and how it bear fruit in our life. But we're also careful not to create formulas right. for you to go, you need to hear the Lord for yourself. Yes. And you need to hear, you know, God hasn't called us all. To, this is why we don't get into like, give an offering and you can, you know, today is this type of offering, give an offering and God, God's got a ministry for you. I don't know what you're called to. We're very careful about that kind of yeah. stuff because God has his own personal relationship with you. Right. I'm not God in your life. Mm. He is God in your life. He is the foundation. We are these vessels mm -hmm. that we're supposed to be ministering. And yeah. Paul said it this way in uh, 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 3, where he says, he says, if truly you received everything, yeah. then read that scripture, what you're about to read. I'm All right, yeah, let this. me read this because this is this is so important and because mm -hmm. I just want to tell you this right now. So many believers that I talk to struggle with shame and guilt in their life and feeling like God is just so doesn't really like them. Mm -hmm. And let me just read this. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir mm. of all things, through whom he also made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express yeah. image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of God. Listen, the express image of God. Jesus showed us who God is. And anybody that came to Jesus mm -hmm. with a pure heart saying, I want you, they didn't have to be perfect. Yeah. They could have been as the worst of all sinners. Mm -hmm. You know what? Jesus showed or us. the worst of all legalists like Paul. Sinner yeah. or legalist. Everybody's covered here, folks. You know what? Jesus said, yes, I will not reject you. Mm -hmm. I will not, you know, send you away. And we need to see that we are in Christ. Yeah. And if you are in Christ, Jesus has accepted you. God has accepted Amen. you. In, and you are his beloved. Amen. You want to add or should I keep no, going? No, keep going, please. Yeah, that you are his. I thought you were going to go somewhere. No, I just find That you scripture. are his beloved. And listen, I literally have talked to so many people that are just like, I just, I mean, I know that I'm saved and, you know, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16. But they don't really get that. no. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Amen. That is the example and demonstration of how much God loves you. Amen. That's the rock that you're supposed to be found on by yep. saying, if you're ever confused about who God is, mm. he literally withheld nothing yeah. from you. Yeah. That is how much he loved you, that he gave Jesus mm. that you might be forever in a relationship with him Amen. there was nothing that he was going to hold back from having you in his family Amen. so if you struggle with thinking that god doesn't love you you were purged of your sin right here purged our sins and sat down amen finished amen praise god you know what i'm saying he said you're mine mm -hmm. and you know what that has to be the foundation because if you are struggling with sin you're not going to get over that just trying to do it in your own strength. You're going to have to say, "Yeah, Jesus loved me and died for me, and I'm drawn upon that strength that Amen. he loves me, and he's given me the power to get over those things that try to hold me in my life. That's so good. And that that's allowing his life to flow out of us yes. in a very special way. Yes, Praise it is. God. All right, you guys, we love you. We've been so blessed to sit with you again today. We will see you next week.